We're on YouTube. Uh, what's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Dale, man. <laughs> I'm watching a YouTube video, 10 Beautiful Moments of Respect Between Musicians. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Oh, oh, man. Oh, oh man. man. Well, what are they showing so far, Al, man? Uh, Madonna like and we... Britney kissing? No, this is by Loudwire, so it's all like rock guys. It's like Marilyn Manson and fucking Billy Joe. Oh, <laughs> Billy Joel? Joe. Billy Joe. Marilyn Manson and Billy Joel. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Joel. <laughs> oh, man. Billy Joe, man. He was on that live uh, Gaga, Lady Gaga thing they did like a couple weeks ago. Guess what song they had him play? American Idiot. <laughs> no. <laughs> American Idiot. They play Dookie? Nope. It was just Billy Joe in his attic oh, or something. Oh, uh, uh, the... Actually, maybe they did leave him with a little bit of dignity because they asked him to do a wake me up oh, when God. September ends. It's one of my mom's favorite songs. Have you guys heard the new Green Day album? <laughs> no. no. You, you should listen to it as a as a as a as a as a joke, as a little fun to have. It's, it's, it's kind of so sad. bad. It's, but it's even worse than you would think. It's it it's like they're <laughs> making, it's like they're doing a bit where they're trying to only do songs that could be in car commercials. Oh God, <laughs> it's so bizarre. It doesn't sound anything. Them and Weezer, like what happened, man? I guess yeah. they just got old. They're just hanging on, man. I mean, that's it. Like they've done they've done their things. They've made art. Now they're just trying to hang on. Someone said Weezer has the same. Um, quality like range as the star wars movies well, but... it's the same it's the same story arc as the star wars movies that's what you yeah. said oh because they're always trying to recapture the uh, magic of the originals yeah like first first three really good then really bad and then okay but still bad i think is what that means i liked the newer ones I th- the the, you know, the last ones the last one that just came out hey, watch it Rogue One is is very good oh, oh I like that one too I couldn't finish Rogue One and I've started it three times dude really? I love it yeah I can't I what can't do you not do like it. I saw it was boring you gotta try again I, I also like don't it. know who it's about you've got to try again I like it you gotta grab me quick one, the last one. Not very good. That's a shame. I haven't. Seen, I still haven't seen it. Because you know why? Because the shooting. I know. What was, shooting? The, there was a shooting in Pale, Quail Springs Mall, not the Penn Square Mall, and it was the day we were gonna go see Star Wars. Like me and Andrew, and like the people we see all. We've seen them all. We've seen all of the new ones with. And there was a shooting, and so they shut it down. It's true. Man, maybe I'll never see it because of that. That's up to you. <laughs> I'll, I'll respect your decision regardless uh, Taylor what is going on with you and your phone and whatever you're doing I'm listening to the Green Day album you're listening to the new one is yeah it's, it sounds like uh, god it sounds like they're just copying five different bands but then like cutting down specific songs and parts and putting them together in these songs it's really bad uh it doesn't even sound like billy joe right yeah it doesn't it sounds like a totally different band do you respect it though no the no. first in fact the very first drum beat on the very first song is a straight rip from uh the drummer for the Jimi hendrix experience uh the, this song that's this beat that's like uh just listen to it you'll know are you gonna play it for us how do i do that you should look up look up the uh, cover art too. The cover art. Oh, I see it. It's when so it? it's like Hot Topic from like 2005. It's, the name of the album is Father of All Mother Effers. Oh, okay. 
with a unicorn blowing rainbow fire out of its mouth, which is the most 2004 thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Huh. Oh. oh, there we go. Yeah, it really does sound like that. Uh what song what song is it? Uh Let Me Stand Next to Your Fire. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a good song. I mean, I, I gotta respect them just copying it. I, I hate them. Age teenager. I gotta respect them. Man, Dookie was like good. I like. I like the old Green Day stuff. Even Warning, I like. Yeah. Yeah, Dookie liked, was great. I uh, I owned Nimrod in the fifth grade. Yeah, no. Nimrod, great <laughs> one. I owned Nimrod. I this is one of the first songs I learned to play on the guitar. My I'm sure my parents just hated it. <laughs> over and over and over. What song is that? It's a Green Day song, old Green Day song. Um, I think I, it was cool because all their music was super easy to play. Oh yeah, I really liked um, Brain Stew Godzilla remix. Oh yeah, yes. man, Godzilla album, dude. Let's it's let's. So awesome. Let's put the Godzilla. <laughs> I can't find. I can't find it. Um. I Wait, to... is, it, is the soundtrack not on Spotify? Nope. No, it's not. Grady it's Carter on Apple. It. Grady Carter has it in his car. He does. <laughs> yeah, I have it probably somewhere. I it's asked, so good. I asked for that album for my uh, for my birthday. Oh, this it had year? Heroes by Wallflowers. Yeah. 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 It had a Ben Fold song. It had a Silver it had Chair Jamiroquai, song. It had Rage Against the Machine. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that Rage song is good too. I like that song. It had Puff Daddy. It had Puff Daddy with uh Robert Plant. Yeah. Silver no, Jimmy Share. Page. Oh, you're right, Jimmy Page. Uh, Ooh, it had Fuzz Bubble. <laughs> Foo Fighters was on it. It had yeah. Joey Deluxe. These are what's that Fuel song? Walk the Sky. Oh yeah, this song. Is it goes like. Bew, 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 bew. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 Yep, that's it. That's what I was doing. <laughs> how did we all have this soundtrack is it it the only movie soundtrack that everyone had Uh, did you guys have can't hardly wait no Uh, that that was the soundtrack that introduced me to blink 182 oh really because it had damn it had damn it on it you know what the best soundtrack movie soundtrack of all time is Mm -mm. um what wicker park (laughs) oh that had um yeah, that was a bunch of emo indie stuff. Had a bunch of emo indie stuff, and it was great. What about um, that movie with Zach Braff? Uh, Garden State, also. Great. Yeah, man, Garden State soundtrack. Everyone had that one too. Park soundtrack. Oh yeah, it had, it had uh, lovers spit on it. it, it All this paper drinking lover spirit. Oh, I had. We have a map of the piano. I loved that song by yeah. Mom. Yeah. It's great. Snow Patrol? Snore Patrol? Snore Patrol. Damn, burn. The Stills? <laughs> Snore Patrol. But I've looked Mates for that Wicker Park. I think Mates I of State? That, that is Park good. One on, um, Native State? On, on vinyl. I don't think it exists. Mogwai? Oh. Dang, Mogwai's on there too? Aqualung? Aqualung. Have you ever watched the movie? It is really good. I'm looking uh, at it now. It is very no, cool. I haven't. The movie does not make sense. Dude, you guys got it. Go to the Can't Hardly Wait soundtrack. Graduate, Third Eye Blind, track one. That's good. Can't get enough of you, baby, Smash Mouth, track two. Okay. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> that is good. Damn it, Blink-182, track three. That's great. Another one I, uh, one I don't know. Buster Rhymes, Turn It Up, Fire It Up, remix. Hit him with the he, featuring little Kim, Missy Elliott. <laughs> Hit him with the he. Hit him, Hit him with, with the, the he. he. Um, oh, yeah. It had Paradise City on it. Feeder's on here. What? 
Oh, this song. Do you guys remember this song? Yeah, man. I forgot about this movie. Feeder. 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 Oh. <laughs> Beaker from Beaker? the Muppets. Beaker from the Muppets. Me, 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 me. How does me. the chorus go? It's something about getting high. So I can get high with my friends. Oh, that's a, that's I a banger. I don't know if I've ever heard that song before. I'm adding straight, this to my... I'm gonna straight love bang that. town. I'm going to love that. But oh. I like that movie. <laughs> I like that movie. Uh, Jason Siegel's in it. He's a character that does not speak, that loves watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fun fact. Yeah. There's so many young, there's so many young people that have more parts than that. Yeah, the Bing, Big Bang, Bing Bang guy is in it. <laughs> Bing Bang guy. Uh, Bing Seth Bang Green guy. is in it. Jennifer Donald, Love Donald Hewitt Faison is in from it. Scrubs is in it. He's the drummer of the band. I'm the drummer of the band. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> okay. All right. You guys ready? What are we nope. talking about today? Don't worry about it. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Please, you got to take that off or else I'm deleting. I'm going to get your Twitter account and delete it again. <laughs> 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 I'm Deontay Burton, and I'm down to dunk. I'm Hamadou Diallo. Hey, I'm Danilo Gallinari. I'm Chris Paul, and I'm down to dunk. I'm Louis Dort, and I'm down to Dort. What's Dort? I, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what that was. In English, bro. I'm Darius Baisley, and I'm down to dunk. I'm Shake Gilders Alexander. I'm Steven Adams. I'm Andre Robinson, and I'm down to dunk. Yeah. On you. Uh, good morning and welcome to episode we didn't get the episode number before the episode started of down to dunk i am luke joined this morning by andrew slam through taylor i wonder what's inside your butthole i wonder what us inside your butthole maybe it's astronauts maybe it's aliens all inside your butthole what's inside your butthole i always want to know what's inside your butthole i always want to know slam through <laughs> and alex it's alex what's up lords? <laughs> what's up guys uh so i, I wanted to uh, just see how you guys are feeling <laughs> about the uh Oh my gosh, Taylor. So if you're live on YouTube with us, you get to see Taylor petting a horrifying dog. And if you're not there, you can go watch it on YouTube. Just search down to dunk and hit subscribe, like, and subscribe. Uh, okay. I want to see what you guys were thinking about the, uh, <laughs> the NBA season potentially picking back up games, potentially being played again, because Teams are starting to open up their practice facilities again in a limited way. They have to. So Sham Sharania of The Athletic just tweeted moments before we started that they'll be taking guys' temperatures as they go into the practice facility. And if they're above 99.1, they won't be allowed to come in. So that's, that's like a low bar. One of the. Criteria. Yeah. Yeah. So they're being very cautious, but <laughs> so there will be minor news like that trickling in over the next week or so, but uh, I don't know uh, how you guys are feeling about the NBA season potentially continuing and there potentially being an NBA champion for the 2019-20 season. You mean you're asking us uh, in terms of our positivity or negativity? Yeah, where are you at? Where are you at right now? Just uh, taking your temperature. Hmm. Ooh, taking my temperature. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, wow. That was good. I, I honestly am still with 50-50. I, every single day, there's 
uh, I read one thing that makes me feel better, and then I'll read uh, at least one thing that makes me feel worse. I do feel like if something is going to come back to normal, it will be these uh, very rich organizations that have a lot of options available to them and have a lot of interested parties at getting back to normal. So I, I like trust that they'll get back to normal quicker than like the bar down my street. So I could, maybe I'll do 5149. Mm. I'm, I'm a little, I feel a little bit worse about it than Alex. I, I guess um, my worry is that if I do, I do agree with Alex that big rich corporations and uh, things like, NBA teams can get it, can get the testing, can do all the stuff to make everything work and get it to where everyone's safe. What I'm worried about is if that happens and it's like, look, we're doing it. Everything's safe. I think that gives some people a false sense of security and be like, yeah, NBA is back. Life's back to normal. Everything's ready. And then people don't social distance. People don't you know, wear masks. People don't do the things they need to do. Meanwhile, at Kong's Tavern. Meanwhile, everyone goes out to Kong's Tavern. <laughs> and then my worry is once these things start opening up in like states that like Oklahoma and like, you know, Texas, like Georgia. Name all of them. Here, I'm not. <laughs> but here in about, you know, because it takes, you know, up to 14 days to get to show symptoms that here in about 14 days stuff's going to start rising again uh infection rates are going to go up and all the work we've done over the past 60 some odd days is going to be deleted and we're going to be back where we were two months ago it's a fun little experiment we're doing yeah so, i guess did you say how you feel about the nba coming back i yeah, feel what the... I, I feel i think it can but i'm worried <laughs> what that's going to do like alex okay. said yeah and so you know, is it worth it? Uh, I don't know. Let me put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. I don't know yet. <laughs> uh, give, him, give him a second. Let him put his thing down. <laughs> I don't know. So, I mean, it would be good to have, you know, it would be good to have sports to watch. I'd like it. I'd watch it. But I think it's bad if it gets everyone a false sense of security. God, it would be so much fun. If they, if they did a bubble thing, like a, a Disney World bubble thing, and we could actually like watch games and talk about games. I'd love that. It'd be amazing. <laughs> Taylor, how are you feeling about it? Um, I feel pessimistic about it until I remember or until I hear someone talk about, hey, you know that there's like a huge amount of money that would be left on the table. And then when it comes back to that, I'm like, okay, they're going to figure it out because greed always gets what it wants. So Tillman I, I is think on the case. Tillman, dude. Tillman could lose his whole life if they don't get this this train back on the rails. He, he disagrees. He yeah. gave a oh. he gave an interview. He said he is doing great. He's <laughs> never going to sell the rockets. Nothing. I've never will... been better. <laughs> oh, actually, actually, this has actually been great for me. Uh, I'm actually making more money. <laughs> <laughs> never been better. Rockets never been better. Harden's ready to go. Definitely not fattened in the in the virtual strip clubs right now. <laughs> so that's what i feel about it this is where it's kind of nice to like i know oklahoma city's ownership group is like a ton of people <laughs> and that at, at times like this that makes me feel better than if it was just a single guy and you're resting all of the future of the franchise on his finances oh, right <laughs> yeah that's very true even though all of the guys involved in the Oklahoma City franchise are probably involved in oil and gas, which there's some right. there's some more diversity within it than that. There are, there are, yeah, there. Are, from what I hear, they're 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 fine. Who name them, Andrew? Name them Drop and the tell names. us how much money they have and give us their bank accounts. Okay, hold on just a second. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, hey Taylor, you might want to watch out for your your sounds. You're making lots of like noisy sounds when other people are talking. Um, <laughs> okay. That's how he rolls. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing that that gives me hope for a potential NBA champion for this year is that they just have a lot. They have time. Like there's a lot of time on their side right now because the ownership, the, the owners of the of the NBA teams are willing to push 
next season back to December. Yeah. And I, so I, if they push that back, then I, I think they're going to figure out a way to make it happen. Most likely without fans. Who knows if it isn't a bubble concept or not, but I think that they're going to, I, I would be, I would be a little surprised if they did not figure out a way to get it done. It would be cool. Uh, if it was like that Disney world idea is awesome. It's like, uh, the, I think it was the UFC wanted to buy an Island and have, uh, like a pay-per-view <laughs> on an Island, which is like the, which is like the story of mortal Kombat, which is awesome. I think if they can do it, I would, I would like it. I'll watch it. If David Stern was the commissioner, I would, my, uh, belief in this coming back would be like 75%. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The PR battle is a big one. And one that I, I think that the NBA cares way more about than any other professional league. But you know, um, wrestling, professional wrestling has gone on without this and, and done kind of bubble, a bubble thing. The mm -hmm. WWE is basically in their performance center and the uh, AEW is basically in the, the uh, Jaguar, the Jacksonville Jag, is that right? The Jaguars facility. Um, and they've been able to do it and they test all their people and they're fine. And they just have their wrestlers there watching. Yeah. And uh, so it's kind of gives them an idea how to do it, I guess, safely. Um, yeah. I've been surprised that like golf hasn't been able to figure it out yet. Cause it seems like things like golf where if you don't have any fans and you're just golfing, <laughs> like you're already six feet away from people most of the time anyways. Yeah. It seems like they would be able to figure that one out. Yeah. They were saying like, you wouldn't even need a caddy and the golfers are like, no, we need caddies. We can't not have caddies. It's like, what are you got? What are golfers? Uh, golf clubs heavy Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah golf is the easiest one and if they can't figure it out but so, andrew you're so right like they spend so much time on their reputation and being on the progressive side of of issues and so yeah i mean the wwe is not <laughs> does it surprise anyone that they were like the first ones like ah we'll just do this and keep it rolling stopped. they never stopped it also yeah. doesn't surprise us that ufc was the one who was like hey we're gonna yeah. create a murder island yes everyone's just on brand and the nba <laughs> nba has to stay on their brand i like how the, the nfc brand and the nfl is just like kind of ignoring everything like they released their schedule today like nope, yeah we're just pushing <laughs> forward yeah it's gonna be fine by fall everything will be great yep and i mean honestly nobody knows i mean no one knows you, pretend they you know, know you know who i listened to last night that was on a show that was talking about he was talking about restaurants coming back and it was the smartest I've heard someone talk about the restaurant industry and how they'll come back and what it was Nate like. Duncan. No, Dave it was, Chang. It was John Taffer. John Taffer was on uh, from uh, Bar Rescue. yesterday and from Bar Rescue. And he was hearing him talk about it. I was like, oh, he's going to come on and be like screaming like, uh, you know, like he has a show. But it was like, he was really, really, really smart about it. And uh, broke it down, like how they come back in the background of his home was just he was in the bar of his home and there was thousands of bottles of liquor <laughs> behind him it was phenomenal <laughs> it sounds really smart i i what think did he say? What, i mean basically he, he said like, there's gonna be to... there's you have to for the restaurants to come back they can't just snap and say we're open and everyone comes back yeah. like it was that's not gonna work right. basically it's gonna break down into thirds there's gonna be a third of people that when you open they come back and they're gonna they're ready to they're ready there's a third of people that are wait and see mm -hmm. and they are going to wait and see how that first group goes make sure everything's right and then they'll come back and then the third group is not coming back until there is um, a vaccine and everything's done mm -hmm. and so basically that's how it will do and the main thing that restaurants can do to show is that they need to show safety they need to show cleanliness that's going to be the same thing because if you had a place and it has your favorite burger but you don't have that trust that they're safe you're not going to go there you're going to go to the place the second favorite burger that you know is going by all the things that you trust that is doing things by the book mm -hmm. i thought that was you know really well thought out and probably right i mean he knows the industry obviously but and um, what is your second favorite burger my second favorite burger, I would guess, um, is 
I don't know. Carl's Jr. Maybe. Carl's second Jr. Favorite. What's, What's your, your first favorite? favorite? I don't. I I don't have a favorite burger. I don't. I don't. Oh, I, I, stop. You don't have a favorite burg? I don't know. Yes, I, do. I like the Republic Gastro Pub burger with the egg on it. There you go. That's yeah, a, good a great burger. That's something. That's a good, burger. good job. That's a good burger. Uh, okay, let's answer some some Twitter questions. First question from at Vanellan King. Is Thibodeau, Van Gundy, or D'Antoni the best Houston coach choice to complete the Thunder's master rebuild plan? Um, I think it's Thibodeau for the, for OKC's plan. Now, I've been I've been following Rockets Twitter recently because they've been talking a lot about this. It seems that like it's kind of just a foregone conclusion that D'Antoni is going to be gone, unless yeah. let's say they come back and in some like weird playoff system, the Rockets end up winning the championship or maybe getting to the Western conference finals Uh, Mm -hmm. outside of that. The impression is that D'Antoni is gone and the two leading candidates are Thibodeau and Jeff Van Gundy. Now Jeff Van Gundy, I kind of, I would have liked the idea from OKC's perspective as him being like the uh, John Gruden who basically has been out of basketball for over a decade and then decides to come back as the savior, but hasn't like adapted at all. The The problem is that Jeff Van Gundy has been coaching these U.S. Olympic teams, like the under 21 teams or whoever it is. Yeah. And apparently he's done well there. So I'm a little, I'm a little more scared of that. I don't know if I should be, but I'm worried that if they do bring in Jeff Van Gundy, he'll be like a little bit better because his MO when he was with the Knicks was that he was really good at like managing egos. Yeah, And that's basically what they need right now. Whereas I don't think that that is Tom Thibodeau's forte. This certainly wasn't his forte with Jimmy Butler. Mm -hmm. He did bring on Samaj to that team, by the way. What team? To that young team, to the G League select team or whatever. (laughs) Well, so did Sam Presti. I know. (laughs) Problem. He He loved how hard he played defense, Andrew. JVG is still about playing hard defense. But yeah, that's all I got to say about that. I think that really any of those. I mean, if I were a rock, I mean, if you're a Rockets fan, I wouldn't really want any of those guys. It's so funny how like Thibodeau, he leaves the Bulls, he's out of basketball, I think for at least a year, and there's all these stories about he's going to visit all of these training camps, all these practices of all these other NBA teams. He's like refined. It's the new Tibbs. He's learned all these new things. And then he goes to Minnesota and he's like the exact same guy he was in Chicago. He's like, Todd Gibson, get over here. You're a power forward. Like I was reading that tanking to the top and it has like a special section about Jimmy Butler in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And I had forgotten that like in the five games prior to Jimmy Butler eventually being traded, he was, being played like 40 minutes a game (laughs) oh he would i mean right now i mean honestly if you're a rockets fan i know they're not satisfied with d'antoni like keep d'antoni i mean he's gotten westbrook who has never volunteered to rest in his entire career to rest on back-to-backs this year i mean that's an achievement in itself and he got him to stop shooting threes so we're going to bring in Tom Thibodeau, who's going to play him 42 minutes a game, every game, and essentially end Russ's career prematurely. Yeah. That that does not sound very exciting to me. I, I don't know why they're – well, I, I don't know why they're unhappy with D'Antoni. He seems – it seems to be a good thing. I don't think they're going to find anything better. Um, Thibodeau's they just going to destroy they haven't won at the highest level with him is why. Yeah. But it's hard when it's been going against, you know, Golden State when they've been so, so, so good. You know, that's – Yeah. I don't know if that's fair, but um, Thibodeau's just going to run all of them, you know, Westbrook and Harden into the ground. Yeah. Also, I don't – I just don't get the idea of firing a coach because he hasn't proved enough yet who almost got you to the finals if it weren't for a Chris Paul injury. But and and did a lot with Steve Nash and stuff too. But I don't understand the idea of firing him and then hiring another coach who also has not achieved enough. Yeah, <laughs> like right. what? You fire Dan yeah. Tony and then bring in Tibbs? 
Yeah, it's, it's not like, like less bringing in of, like Phil Jackson as like. Yeah, this. it's like who are they going to bring in that they yeah. know is better than D'Antoni? Yeah, guys like that get fired all the time though in the league. But yeah, the the solution, the Van Gundy Thibodeau solution seems hilarious at best. Uh, okay, Allen underscore Miller twelve. How at Suk Levens? How do you like the challenge this season? <clears throat> the challenge, Taylor. Are you watching the challenge this season? Oh, no. It's so so good because they made one crucial change. Hey, before and, you before you get into it, will you explain to people like me what the challenge what is? What the challenge is. So it used to be the real world road rules challenge. So it used to be people from road rules, people first from real world in a challenge together doing physical, mental puzzles, things. Oh, and I at love the end there's a puzzles. winner. So now, now there's <laughs> like Sudoku. They were doing Sudoku. Like Sudoku, like Sudoku. They literally yeah, but in their mind, just like Sudoku's. Cool, cool, cool. Um, now, now since real world and road rules really aren't this <laughs> aren't there, they bring in like they brought in someone from The Bachelor. They brought in people from Big Brother. They brought in people from Survivor. Uh, Who'd they bring in from Bachelor? Um, this guy. He got. He, there's only been one. He got kicked off the first episode. He was oh, not okay. very good. And I think his stuff. name was like probably Ben. Most likely, um, I can tell you. I can't remember who it was because he got kicked off the first episode. He lost uh, at elimination. So, but so normally, if you survive in the game, you run the final. The finals are really hard, and then if you win, you win like a million dollars. Well, this season they've made a huge change in that you have to win in elimination and get. And if you win, you get like a red skull on your helmet. If you you must win an elimination to get into the final which is it changes the game in a, in a really, really big way and makes it to where people that could skate by and use their political savvy to never have to go in now wouldn't run a final. So it's very, very, very good. And uh, I'm really, really, really liking it. I have a question about that really quick. Sure. How do you, so then does it become part of your strategy to get yourself in an elimination, but you would like tank? So like say someone from the other team and you're like, Oh, I would face that person in elimination. Okay, I'm going to tank out right here and get in that kind now. Of, they, there, I think there are some players that don't – it's the first time they've done it, so I think there are some players that don't really understand how important it is to get in and get it because they put in rookies. So you want to go yeah. in against someone weak. Like there's a <laughs> Classic. Survivor that everyone Fresh meat. To to. Um, so, yeah, some people are, are accusing others of throwing challenges to get into the elimination to get the skull. <laughs> So it's added another like layer of gameplay to it. It's very. very I'm about good. to jump. I'm about to hop on in. Jeez, yeah, it sounds like an onion just peeling back all those layers. I love it. It really is good. It's on Wednesdays on MTV. It's very very good, and it is it is a sport. So they, the MTV is not just playing music videos anymore. It sounds like they've got some other program. <laughs> they have just other changed kind of recently. Now cool. now MTV is basically just the challenge on Wednesdays, and then the show ridiculousness. That's the only. <laughs> I can't thing believe that's, that's still going. It's the only show that's ever on. I guess it's just it's just AFV though for NTV people. Well, there was a guy there was a guy on Twitter, uh, Shrillist, who said that he worked at MTV when Prince died, and they did all of this like Prince programming, like playing his old music videos and everything, and their ratings tanked, and so they <laughs> so they just had to put back on ridiculousness. Yeah. People literally, that's the only thing is ridiculousness. That's the only thing that plays. They don't even re- they don't even reshow the challenge. They, if you miss it when the challenge is on and you don't record it, they never replay it. Wow, that's like old school. Yeah, you have to get it on. I had to find get on MTV.com and you have to sign up for like all this stuff. And wow, it's, it's very difficult. That's like uh, NBA back in the seventies on tape delay. Look at you, Luke. <laughs> well, it's, it's good. Trying to get your challenge fix. I got to. It's it's good. You you should watch one and see if you like it. It it literally it's great television the cool thing is alex like you have contestants that are repeating year after year after year and so you have like all these different storylines and characters that you now yeah. know like johnny bananas yeah and johnny bananas has been on it for like at least 10 years probably more than that more than that i think yeah. like his job yeah it really it's his job because i've been wanting to get into a, a rea- reality tv show because i don't watch any and my my leading candidate was going to be 90 Day Fiance, but it sounds like you guys are thinking the challenge. Challenge is pretty good, and also this season of Survivor is really good. 
Really? Have you been listening to the uh, the No Dunks guys? They're big Survivor fans. They have a Survivor recap show every week now. Oh, uh, really? No, I don't. On The Athletic. Because the, uh, the thing about Survivor this year is it's the 40th season, and it's oh my winners at, it's winners at war. So there's 20 contestants, and each one of them has won a season of Survivor. So there's, wow. not, a, so there's not a bad player in there, and it's, it's pretty high-level gameplay. <laughs> Andrew? <laughs> Hello. Hey, great to see you guys. Um, okay, question from at Pro Crier. Chris Paul turned thirty-five. Does Jay think all of Chris Paul's favorite music artists sound the same? Jay can't even answer for himself here. Uh, at Winskill, nineteen sixty-nine. Top five most out of shape players when the NBA resumes. Jokic is obviously number one. Definitely. Jokic, oh, you got to throw Harden in there. PJ Tucker. Dion. Oh, Dion. I don't I, know, man. He's been skating. I was going to say, he's doing a lot of roller skating. Really? Oh, yes. Uh, You're not seeing him? No, on I don't follow Instagram? Him. Oh, you've got to. It is a treat. <laughs> I feel You'd like it would be... There will be some really funny ones from <laughs> players from bad teams, like players who are already out of the playoffs who yeah. at this point probably figure oh it's over no big deal like it's marcus cousins may never play in the league again that is so crazy john wall john wall's trying to be too fat to even sit on the bench <laughs> it would just be too shocking for for fans to see john wall is like is in good shape right now hey speaking of demarcus Prove cousins, it. uh andrew i know you don't listen to dunked on but they had a a show where they did the worst, the best and worst decisions of the last five years for every team in the NBA. Okay. And I was wondering what you guys thought the worst Thunder decision. I'm not going to tell you what they said, but off the top of your head, what would you say is the worst decision made by the Thunder in the last five years? So this is going five back years. to like 2015, 16. So like Katie's last year. Yeah. I mean, is it, Oh, uh, well, it does. It's whatever you want it to be. Probably trading for Mello. See, I, th I think it's the Mello trade as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Ronnie Price, I do think is a terrible decision, but it, it's, it ultimately didn't mean a ton. Backbreaking kind of deal. It's a Danny LaRue throw his hands up in the air kind of decision. Yeah. The other one they brought up, though, was matching the Ennis Cantor offer which I think is an interesting one because obviously as Thunder fans, you know, we remember that 2016 series against the Spurs when, you know, having Adams and Cantor on the floor at the same time was like a huge deal, yeah. but ultimately it didn't mean anything. Like mm -hmm. they lost, they didn't make the finals, so who cares? And I, I do, I, I don't remember the cap situation enough to know if they hadn't matched that offer to Cantor, could they have gotten other pieces? No. I mean, they're over the cap. I mean, I, I think, know what the number one is. I mean, you can't. I mean, that one. Essentially, if you don't re-sign Cantor, the the Thunder don't have Dennis Schroeder today. Right. Which, by the way, was they did bring it up again. As a bad one. Yeah. I I don't know how you could watch him this year and think is a bad one. Yeah, I I, I thought we had kind of moved past that. I mean, there's just there's no. There's no way. I mean, he's been he he will be in the top three of the six men of the year. How could you? I mean, it's it's ridiculous. This is why I don't listen to them. Like their opinions are are just absurd. I know what the number one is. What? Steve's contract. They actually did bring up Steve's contract. It, it was it's weird though because it's more of like a 2020 hindsight thing because yeah. at the time it was 2016 like every other team we thought the cap was going to continue rising at a level that it wouldn't matter that you gave Stephen Adams 25 million dollars a year um and it turns out that paying Evan Turner and <laughs> like you all dang and Timothy Timothy Mozgov like you would that turned out to be a really bad thing for a lot of teams uh so I I don't know like it, it did hamstring them in some ways but like obviously, if you don't have Steve, you have to have someone there. Yeah, and I don't well, know who that player would have been. I mean, I 
those guys are ridiculous. I mean, they're just straight up. What about the best move? Because I disagreed with both of them. Like one of them picked the Westbrook trade as the best move. One of them picked the Paul George to the Clippers trade as the best move. And I felt like the Paul George original trade was the best move of the last five years. I mean, it was good. It just didn't, obviously, if you're using hindsight results and what you would have wanted for the franchise. I mean, I think the Paul George trade to the Clippers is probably the best one. Yeah. Yeah. that that original Paul George trade was such a gamble because yeah. they were kind of locked into Westbrook at that point because mm-hmm. he had signed the extension at that point. They knew they only had him for a year with Paul George and they traded away their best assets, which we didn't realize at the time, but they traded away two all-stars yeah. for Paul George. Could the, move be, could the move be re-signing Paul George is the best move? Or the surge trade. Because I think re-signing him is something that no one thought we could do and they were able to pull it off, and which led to the trade. Yeah, with those ones, it's kind of like LeBron going to the Lakers. It's like how big of a role did Sam Presti actually have in Paul George deciding to re-sign? I don't know. I mean, he had to sell sell him basically on the fact that, hey, try this again. If it doesn't work, I will send you where you want to go. Yeah. I think, I mean, I, I would say it's that. It's a big one. I think the Ibaka one is huge too. And all of that turns everything into we're the Paul George trick. Yeah, everything yes. we're talking about is linked. So, I mean, it's just like a series of moves. Yeah. That. Yeah. Or you can go with just a straight Sam Presti pwn on the Bulls, that Bulls trade. They actually did bring up that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a, I mean, that was just really, really bad on the Bulls part. Bloody bad. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Uh, this is all to say that I think Joel Embiid will be the most out of shape player returning. <laughs> That's good a good answer. One. Good answer. <laughs> good answer. Uh, let's see. At Trust the Void, as entertaining as it has been, how many more trivia competitions can your group's friendship take? Well, that's a good question because it has gotten pretty contentious over these last couple weeks i feel like week to week you know the teams that are there's infighting kind of changes so obviously this week taylor and jay are kind of looking at themselves in the mirror taking a long time they they were texting me today going over some of their biggest mistakes (laughs) and they were mistakes i mean hulka hulka burning fudge they were so close and that would have been a 500 pointer yeah loonies alex the i got five on it I mean, you guys could have gone into that second round only down four hundred. It would have been it would have been something else, photo finish. But uh... I'm just saying, this is what's happening: is that uh, Jay and Taylor re- don't trust each other, and me and Andrew have never been stronger. He trusts me. I feel like he trusts me, and that's given that's empowered me. <laughs> to make my also, I think also what helped them a lot this last week was having like three categories that they were experts in in some regard hey okay you, yeah, jay and i had no chance okay first you got of all to pick your categories jay, yeah su- and alex changed them no i didn't jay suggested uh he wanted re- early 90s rap music i gave it to him yeah. and he suggested shaquille he o'neal it. why would you do that that's what he gave me and then you suggested the office which they did really well at and then you said rap and metal <laughs> Yeah, because I didn't I know what thinking, that meant. I told you asked me what I meant, and I told you what I meant because I was no, like, you sent I got me a, a picture of a, a guy, a metal, some guy. random like, metal guy, <laughs> <laughs> so, a robot man. Yeah, I didn't like, know if you meant um, like new metal, like you wanted all rap metal. <laughs> oh, like I want to just corn questions. Dude. <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't complain because me and Andrew did not put topics forward. Yeah, I know, and you guys got like the best, the most perfect topics for yourselves. So basically, you're complaining about yourself that you yeah. gave bad topics. No, I'm complaining that Jay and I actually did what we discussed doing, and we got hurt by it. And I you guys, done, I would have done, would have done cereal for sure. 
Yeah, I, I would have done real. something video games. And then, but oh, you, you didn't. Just, I and, mean, I mean, you didn't. You didn't do it. Alex gave you a week. Would you, you didn't do would it. Would you be complaining if you didn't lose so badly? Yeah. And you only uh, done one week. I mean, no. What would I complain about if we won? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who complains when they win? Uh-huh. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> you guys are drunk. You guys are drunk on success. You don't even know what reality is, and that's going to be your downfall. Yep. That Alex was has been, I, I would argue Alex has been fair because I, I, with my answer of Wolf of Wall Street, you won. not give it to me because of yeah. the Wolf of Wall Street. And you guys well, got that. Well, yeah. But you yeah. got, I got so five on it. Yeah, he's being fair. So basically, our friendship is going to end next week. <laughs> the answer to the question yeah it's definitely not lasting six more weeks no this is it's it's gonna come crashing down i'm just gonna do solo i'm just i just think it's gonna get down to like the wire to where like (laughs) the last one we're gonna be like at each other's throats yeah nba please let's figure this out let's figure out the bubble we need america to get more testing so that (laughs) down to dunk can continue uh okay What's the best spoon? This is for my glazing consume. Big spoon. spoon. T- Will you let me finish, Taylor? L- little spoon, actually. <laughs> I'll wait. The band. <laughs> okay. uh, teaspoon, soup spoon, dessert spoon to use for each. Cereal, peanut butter, a.k.a. yogurt, or ice cream. <laughs> okay, here's my favorite spoon. Do you remember the spoon? It came in some cereals like when we were growing up. Yeah. It hooked on your finger and like wrapped around your finger and had a spoon at the end. And when you got it in the milk, it changed colors. Yeah. Best spoon. You would use that today? Uh, yeah, if I ate cereal, but I, it was a good spoon. Okay. Had so Better much cereal spoon. The spoon that was also spoon. a straw. Cause then you, but it was, it is it's kind of unnatural to eat like this but i got used to it i i ate with it yeah i, I feel like the big spoons are, are are getting a little too big so i, I most of the time use a, a smaller spoon even with soups uh yeah i just i can't fit that big spoon in my mouth i'm like a big ladle of soup just <laughs> you're using a ladle <laughs> no but just a big lit like that's how big the spoon is i like a big spoon yeah you know, you open Luke's uh, utensil drawer and it's just all ladles, all ladles in one part. I prefer a small spoon with soup, a teaspoon, so I have to eat it like this. Isn't a like teaspoon a normal in my mouth. Size spoon? Is a teaspoon a what? A normal size spoon? No. A teaspoon's tiny. Yeah, they're little baby spoons. A little tiny spoon. Yeah, they're for tea, Andrew. Jeez, a, get it a, together. They're for literally only stirring your tea. It's a unit, <laughs> Nothing it's else. A unit of measurement. Honestly, you can be arrested if you use them for anything else. <laughs> it's immoral. I used to be into bigger spoons. Now I'm 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 dialing it back a little bit. Really? Did you did you guys ever have the uh, cereal bowls when you were younger that had the uh, straw built in? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't like that because I would just dump out the milk afterwards. I was never drinking my milk. In oh, the first you didn't? Place. I drank. I would drink the milk if it was a. Uh... Count Chocula, the chocolate milk at the end, good. Mm-hmm. Andrew, do you currently drink your milk? It depends. It depends on the day. Wow. Today, drink it. <laughs> I I don't. I can't drink enough milk to to own to buy milk. I wish you just stopped back. right there. I can't drink enough milk. <laughs> I can't drink enough milk to to get milk because it goes bad. Which cereal do you think produces the best milk? Cookie Crisp. Uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I would say Count Chocula. Wow. Varied opinions. Uh, Apple Jacks makes good milk, man. Apple milk. Uh, I just different. can't. I, I don't like Apple Just hits different. It, I just don't get why you like it because it doesn't taste like apple. Hey, business idea. What if we came out with a line of milks that was already had the cereals like soaking in them? This is a thing. It is. It is. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's very. Oh yeah. Really? Oh yeah. All over the country. What's it called? What? Yeah, for sure. What's it called? What's it called? It's called cereal milk. Yeah, it's all over the place. Are you serious? Yeah. Like at I'm the serious. gas station? Yeah. It loves. The heck, you, the heck you say? I'm serious. 
I'm looking it up right now. On Q? Yeah. This is this has been a thing for a while. Mm, I don't see Quick anything trip? on Amazon. Been a Are thing. You typing in cereal milks? Yeah, I typed in cereal milk. Uh, we've answered this question, but out of respect for Bangalope, we'll answer it again. Uh, the best version of a Reese's treat. Uh, well, what are the options? You got classic, classic mini, miniature, egg, egg. To me, egg is the best. Well, huh? I or would say treat. egg is the best. No, egg tiny, or tree. tiny miniature is the best. Oh, give me a break. What? Yeah. That's, it's the perfect. It's, it's perfect. The worst. It's the worst, in my opinion. It's the worst? Yeah, it's the worst. What the heck you say? No, it's the best. <laughs> it's you, pop, you can pop each one in their mouth. Yeah, that's the worst. Still good, but the worst. Huh. I, I like would a, say egg is the worst. How is it the worst? Too yeah, it's the worst. There's too much, there's too much peanut butter, not enough, not enough chocolate. Well, I like <laughs> I like a lot of peanut butter. Wow. Hey, I was just thinking of this. Have you guys ever made a deconstructed uh, Reese's peanut butter cup? What do you mean? Like, <laughs> just get two squares of chocolate and put peanut butter in between them. Would it taste good? I thought it would taste good. <laughs> I mean, peanut butter and chocolate, always good, right? But you know, and as good? I think the, te- the consistency of the chocolate is very important here. Yeah. Because the Reese's chocolate is kind of, it's not a hard chocolate. I mean, oh, it, it's smooth. Mine is because I put it in the refrigerator. That's different. It Just different. hits different. Yeah, what's good. your favorite? Uh, I'm a pieces man, to be honest. But Gross. I'm with, with my candy, though. I like M&M's. I like things that I can have like one or two at a time. And I make this bag last a long oh, time. Oh, yeah. I love know? eating one M&M at a time. I'm that's serious. Like a but nice I don't get normal person. M&M's. That's psycho behavior. That's psycho behavior. That is. That's psycho behavior. <laughs> <laughs> that's psycho behavior. And that's psycho behavior. behavior. That's psycho behavior. He's <laughs> one M and M. That's like that's I, first honestly. Of all, I did not say that, Alex. Said yes, that. you did. You you, you said, said I'm a serial two. killer. I eat one M M&M and M at a time. <laughs> that's psycho behavior. That's psycho behavior. That's, that's crazy cool. though. That is crazy. One, that is hey, really crazy. I'm, oh, oh, I just like a little sweet. I'll have a single M and M. I'll allow myself one M and M. I want one M. It's almost too sweet for me. I wish Listen, I could have you, half. You know what I do with M and M minis, though, is I dump the whole thing in my mouth. Dude, M and M minis. You got it. That's a one buy bite. Those? Who buys those? Seriously. When was and the last time you bought M and M minis? Yeah, I, just, I don't. I steal one them from M&M like at a time. I just want it lasts a, single, a long time. I just want a single M M&M mini. Hey, speaking of uh, serial killers, did you guys uh, did I ever tell you guys that my dad, he his best friend in elementary school was this guy named Leo Burt, and Leo Burt eventually bombed the University of Wisconsin at Madison oh. uh, when he was older because he was a crazy guy, and yeah. uh, when he was younger, he used to kill flies, and he had a journal where he would draw every single fly body, one by one that he would kill. What? So that's kind of like eating one M and M at a time, is what I'm saying. No, that's psycho behavior. <laughs> that's psycho behavior. If I if you would have walked in my office and told me that, I'd say that's psycho behavior. <laughs> I said, Get on out of here. If I catch my son with a book, I'm gonna say, "Son, is that your fly journal?" <laughs> that's psycho behavior. You can't that's- stay in this. House. All right, I can't do any more, Taylor. That um, is kind of Steve O, Utah. That's movie good in like psycho behavior. At Steve O, Utah, wants to know the best Doritos flavor. I have it. Taylor, what? what do you think? I just like straight up nacho cheese. Well, it's nacho cheesier. I'm well, I cool, like original. I'm, I'm Cool Ranch. Cool yeah, Ranch. I would definitely say Cool Ranch. What about Cooler Ranch? Cool Ranch. Well, and don't sleep on the uh, sweet Thai chili. Hey, have you guys ever bought any of those individually wrapped hot chips, like the ghost pepper chips? Oh, no. What? No. They, they make individually, individually wrapped, wrapped chips? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one like, chip? It's like a one chip challenge where you have to eat one spicy chip. I've seen Shaq do it. Yeah. I one have, chip, Andrew. I have too much respect for my bottom. That would No, that you would, don't. That <laughs> no, you don't. don't. We heard it. <laughs> that, yeah. would, that, that would hurt. 
That has never been the case in your life. <laughs> you hurt. liar. You liar. It would, would hurt. You have zero respect. I have so much respect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it would it would burn. It's so bad. Burn going in, burn coming out. Uh spicy nacho is a great Doritos flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex, well, is that is that not the original one? Spicy nacho? I think no. that's just what not- the ri- the cheese one's called. It's no, just called nacho, nacho cheese. Here. Yeah, nacho what cheese. Heck? Nacho what cheese heck? ranch. Those are the original. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> what the heck <laughs> okay this is a basketball question so get ready At blue, get ready blue, which team would have the most wins the one with both trades the one with Russ only Russ trade only or the one with the PG trade only so imagine the team today as it is or a team that has Russell Westbrook, Shea, um, Gallo. Gallinari, Stephen Adams, those guys. Or a team that has Chris Paul and Paul George and Stephen Adams. Mm. And I would say if they kept Paul George, you could, you could say that they would have probably also kept Jeremy Grant on that team. This is a good question. See, the, the Jeremy Grant part is really important for me, though, because mm-hmm. if, if they don't have him, then you're looking at a lineup where who are you starting at shooting guard? Ferg. Who, yeah, who was out most of this season, so who are you starting at shooting guard? And then who are, you, who are you starting at power forward? Probably Baisley. Like, yeah. all of a sudden, that team takes a huge drop-off. I think Even would, though yeah. I like the idea of CP3, Paul George, and Steven Adams. If you had CP3... Paul George, Stephen Adams, and Jeremy Grant. It's pretty good. I think that team has the least amount of wins, though, because it, Paul George has been hurt. Yeah, I think it has not that, been great this year. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I mean, it. Russ, SGA, Gallo. I mean, the only question is who are you playing at small forward. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the same situation that they're having this year. Yeah, Ferg or Dort or whatever. Dort, yeah. you know, Nader. One of yeah, those. Gallo with uh, Russ, I would love to see that. Yeah, so which, which team would be that. better? The Chris Paul Thunder or the Westbrook Thunder? Which has a better record today? I, I think the Chris Paul Thunder. I would say the Russ Thunder. What makes you say the Russ Thunder? Uh, because I think there's you're 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 assuming the Jeremy Grant thing, but Jeremy I mean, Grant would not be on that team because I because they traded Jeremy Grant because they wanted to get make sure that Gallinari started He'd be on PG CP three team, minutes, but he would be on the PG team because they didn't have Gallinari. Would they though? Because they would still be looking forward and wanting to change the team. I don't. I mean, th- you don't. You don't trade. You not don't trade Russell Westbrook and expect to like. Like keep Paul George in Oklahoma City just by himself. Like that's obviously going to end soon, anyways. So I think they still would have made the Jeremy Grant trade because the whole point of that was just trying to get something because you're not going to pay him the following summer. But maybe they would have, is what I'm saying. And I'm if, saying if PG maybe they stays. wouldn't have. <laughs> I think it's more likely because you don't. I think part of the the Jeremy Grant trade was Gallinari being here. Yeah, but I mean, Jeremy Grant is playing backup minutes in Denver. Yeah, he is. But they, I think the the long term plan is to have him as be their starter next to Jokic. I don't Palmer, know. I, I think a Russ team because it just has more talent. Like Russ, SGA, Gallo, Stephen Adams. That's just more talent. But I don't know if you could do. Like I don't know if you can play Schroeder, Schroeder, excuse me, Schroeder. and and Russ and SGA together as much as you can CP3 shooter and SGA. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like it, I, would have, it would have been a, a worse fit, but... But SGA, isn't that the better lineup? I mean, isn't that the lineup you would want out at the end of a game with Russ, too? And does Russ sit back-to-backs on the Thunder? And does Russ stop shooting threes on the Thunder? Are those yeah, all things see, I don't All so. important questions. I don't, think he, I don't think it's Houston-Russ that you have. You're 
looking at Russ when it was by himself. And I, I just don't think he'd, you know, be the leader that I think Chris Paul has been that's helped these younger guys. That's why I think Chris Paul's thunder is better. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of people that argue that Chris Paul's had a better year than Russ. And plus, it's Houston Russ. If he's still here and he's still, you know, not sitting back backs and he's shooting threes, he's even worse than what than what he is now in, in Houston. Yeah. Than like the last like five weeks of Houston or whatever it's been. Yeah. I don't know. Guess what? You know, I think the Paul George CP3 team would actually be pretty good if everyone stayed healthy. Yeah, but Paul George they'd be, they'd be so thin though. He didn't get that team would be incredibly to, yeah yeah December. yeah if you had if you had a paul if you had a healthy paul george that was like peak paul george but he was has not been that guy this year yeah. he's been injured a lot hasn't been as efficient or as good that's why i just don't think you can call that one but i think with, yeah with the other two teams like sga being like the ad, being the additional piece mm-hmm. is a big deal because he's he's like he's the missing piece in a lot of a lot of these Thunder teams where it's like if they had just one more guy, and you essentially replace Gallo or Paul George with Gallo, which is obviously a huge downgrade, but still a guy that can give you twenty points a night, and you add SGA, which is a big deal as far as depth and balance and all that kind of stuff. But it's an interesting question. I think I don't think there's a clear cut answer. I do think it's between the Russ team and the Chris Paul team, just for all the reasons that we stated. And I lean Chris Paul just because I think part of this team's success is that they have been able to like completely turn the page to like the next era of thunder, you know, and there was a, like a, almost like a bitter staleness with Russ still here that existed and I don't think that can be denied. I mean, if you watch the team lose to the Portland Trail Blazers in five games to a team that most people picked the Thunder to beat that team, that just it just existed. It was there. It was awkward. And part of why Paul George wanted out. That's part of why Westbrook wanted out at the end of the day, too. And so I think that's hard. It was just hard to just keep that going. And some of it is that Russ wasn't getting what he wanted here either. You know, like Russ was probably frustrated. You know, fan base is frustrated the last three years. You know, first running out three years in a row. That's not exciting, especially for a team that's had so much success. Russell is probably like 30 times more frustrated with that. And so I think I think it ended up being the best case scenario for a lot of people this season, uh, Westbrook included because he's been able to make some changes and is on a, on a on a pretty good team. But it, it still is strange every time I think about it that the Thunder have a better record than that Rockets team. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, like, we haven't even talked about the third scenario, which is that they make both trades. Whereas, like, that's the team that we know was actually on pace to win 50 games, which they have not done in three seasons. And yeah. we don't even consider that team even though that's the team we've actually well, seen do it. That's the, C- that's the CP3 team. Well, I'm saying the team where both trades are made uh-huh. as opposed to CP3 and Paul George. That's, that's what I was talking about, though. That's the two teams I'm picking between, is this current team that we have today versus the team that would just have Russ on it. I don't think the team with Paul George and, and CP3 Oh, okay. It'd be the best one. And you know what? Like, I think I was just thinking about it. And like, I think I picked Chris Paul with this team because I know how they play. And I think in my head, I just try to insert Russ into how they're playing now. But you can't do that. I mean, if Russ was the leader of this team, they would play completely differently. Like SGA's role would be different. You know, Steve's role would be different. Schroeder's role would be different. So it's hard for me to imagine how they could be better and maybe worse to be fair. Yeah. yeah. It would have been interesting because Russ never played with a young player who was as good as SGA. So we don't really know how he would have reacted to that. Victor, does Oladipo count? 
I mean, he he was not as good as SGA. He wasn't a, a second year player either. He's pretty good. Better better than you remember. Think about think about this. Okay, um, Chris Paul is twelve point eight shots per game. He he has allowed these other players to to blossom. Yeah, you know nobody takes more than fifteen shots a game. You know who takes the most shots per game on the team? Gallo. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. SGA. Mm-mm. S- Schroeder. Uh, Schroeder. Schroeder. Fifteen shots per game. And wow. I mean, Russ yeah. should be taking thirty. <laughs> he did not take it 30. Take 30. 30. He would he would take a lot, not 30, but a lot. So Let's see what he's, he's taking on the Rockets. Once or twice, 30. Westbrook takes 22.6 shots per game in Houston. 10 more shots than Chris Paul does. That's wild that he's taking more shots per game than he took either of the last two seasons in Oklahoma City. Pretty wild to think about. And and he's considered to be playing a lot better basketball. Yeah, yeah. this is you know like more fact, efficient this is, basketball. This season is only second to his MVP season in terms of shots per game. <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. Somehow it's, it's, it's become storming here. It is. It's loud. It's storming. Uh, yeah, that's. That's interest a really a really good question. Really interesting question. Let us know what you think. That's a good Twitter. question. Starman and Norman. At Kyle Taco behavior. At Kyle underscore E underscore Clark. Pib or Dr. Pepper? I'm going Pib. He's going Pib. Oh, he's he's nutty. That's psycho Whoa, behavior. Not psycho behavior. Not psycho behavior. That's a psycho mom. Only moms like Pib. Here's the thing. <laughs> Pib is what you get when they don't have Dr. Pepper. <laughs> or you're a mom. Or you're a mom. If or you're really related time, to the doctor. The only time I'm <laughs> grabbing a Pib Extra is when there's no Dr. Pepper. Wait, what's Pib Extra? Uh, That's just what it's called now. It became, oh, really? Mr. Pib yeah. became Pib Extra. Oh, he's a mister. Excuse me. I thought he was also a doctor. He's not a doctor. He's just a regular guy. He's just a regular guy. <laughs> not been to medical school, or at least did not uh, get through. Mr. Um, Pibb's for the blue collar Americans, Mr. not for the Pibb rich folk drinking Dr. Pepper. Not as good. Dr. Pepper's better. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Pepper. And you're, yeah. and you're listening to an expert here because Luke, at one time of his life, was drinking about 12 Dr. Peppers <laughs> per day. At, in, in college, I remember my sophomore, no, junior year, I was drinking at li- between six and 10 Dr. Peppers a day. <laughs> I had a friend that would come into my room and he'd go, let me see it. And I'd take a full Dr. Pepper and just drink, chug it, drink it all. Dude, I bet your BO smelled crazy. <laughs> I bet you had, you smelled so weird, dude. The thing is, I was 2,000 calories a day of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's crazy if you look at how much sugar, like literally... Yeah. Like teaspoons of sugar are in oh, Dr. Yeah. Pepper, and think about how many cans coursing, you were drinking per day. Coursing through my veins, and I, I don't, I have not had a a cola, a soda, in I think four years. Is that wow. true? with alcohol? True. Even when you go out? No, even when I go out, sometimes I'll get a Red Bull, but not very often. But uh, I drink water. It's been wow. it's been a huge change because my first week at my my job I have now, I brought up some some DPS, and I was just cranking through DPS. <laughs> so I was like, and I was like, I'm gonna get gigantic if I sit here and drink DPS all day. I, was like, I, gotta, I gotta do water. So I stopped. I it was it was the only time I've ever done it. Uh, I would say that Mr. Pib is good. But I don't. It's not as good. Did you know that uh, Mr. Pib was first introduced as Peppo to Pepe. compete with Dr. Pepper? He was first introduced were, as all, Tinkle Popo. Tinkle all Popo. contenders to the throne. Doctor Thunder, Pib. Yeah. They're all chasing after something that can never be. It's true. It's very true. Also, um, actually, Andrew, you know when the last time I've had Dr. Pepper? 
Mm-mm. your house because you bought me a Dr. Pepper with real cane sugar. I did. It's oh. true. Ooh, a, du- a Dublin Dr. Pepper. Oh, they're so good. They're, they're so good. They're, it's yeah. like, it is like drugs to me. Yeah, that's <laughs> very good. Uh, YouTube thinks that Taylor is drunk. So, just, <laughs> really? Yeah, just taking a dip into the. YouTube I think it's comments. because I'm on my phone, so I'm just like this Actually, all, the whole has, time. I think it's with your movements. I think it has to do with your words. Uh, let's see. Oh, now the rain started up here. I wonder if it's because you said that you only eat half of an M and M at a time. I think, yeah. <laughs> you said you cut them up with a knife and fork. I think it's from my psycho behavior. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um let's see last question lucas tyrell 78 is it pronounced reese's pieces or reese's pieces it's pronounced racist pisces <laughs> thanks for listening to our podcast Racist, racist Pisces. Racist Pisces? <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, we didn't talk about the book again. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>